Good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to be sharing with you a bit of a testimony. It's not something I've ever shared before, but it's definitely something that the Lord um, once brought out in the open. And how many of us know that in order to heal from certain things in our past, those things that were once concealed need to be brought out of the dark into his marvelous light for that true freedom. Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I found it very interesting that I had this particular vision on June 22nd, which is the day that I got married. I got married to someone I had no business being married to. At the time, I met my ex-husband through my father. Me and my father did not have a good relationship at all. We weren't close. We had a very superficial relationship, kind of one where I just put on a face, greeted him civilly while I was seething underneath with pure venom and hatred um, for the fact that he had been unemotionally available my entire life. So I met this man through my father and I met this man who was the son of my father's then wife at the time. I know now that I had no business ever marrying that man. And since we're being blatantly upfront and honest today, I want to be transparent with you that that choice has caused severe repercussions and consequences for my children that I had with this man. I have two daughters. So in this vision that I had yesterday, June 22nd, the day I got married, my hands were dripping blood. The Lord said, the old you has been nailed to the cross with me. I saw myself hanging on a cross with my head tilted to the, to the left side. Then the vision cut out to this next scene where I saw my body being taken down from that very same cross and placed in a tomb. And I heard the Lord say, and buried with me in a tomb. Then I saw the day of my baptism is actually one of the happiest days of my life and heard the Lord say you were raised to new life becoming a new creation the vision cut back again to the scene with the blood on my hands again and I heard the Lord say there was so much blood on your hands And then I saw this water pouring down on me and it looked so very clean. It was clear, completely clear and pure. And the blood was washing away from my hands. And I heard the Lord say, I washed you in my word. The vision cut out again to another scene where I was filthy. It looked as if I had rolled around in the mud including my face. And the water continued to pour and I watched all this dirt rolling away. And it went down into this drain in the floor. Then someone, and I don't know who it was in this next scene of the vision, I just saw their hands, reached out to take from me this pile of filthy soiled clothes that I was holding. Then I saw this flowing white robe being placed draped over my head and the robe was very bright. It was like the purest white, like, like no stain had ever touched it and it was almost luminescent. The vision cut out yet again to another scene and I saw my very own hands pushing away this large pile of money. 
And then I held out my hand with my palm facing up and an oyster with a pearl in the shell, a, a shell with a, a pearl in the middle of it was placed in my hands. And I heard the Lord say, you have sacrificed it all for my kingdom to purchase a pearl of great price. I then closed my hands tightly around the shell with the pearl inside. Then it looked like I was being drenched in oil in this next scene in the vision. It was poured out all over my head while I was wearing this new robe, but it rolled off the garment. So all the oil was pouring over all the rest of me, but it would roll right off the garment as if it never touched or stained the linen. I heard the Lord say, you are like the five virgins, not needing to borrow any oil. I then heard the Lord say, I have saturated you in the anointing. You will bring me much, much glory. I am so very proud of you. You are becoming a Proverbs 31 woman from glory to glory. Before the Lord got a hold of me, I was far from a Proverbs 31 woman. And since we're being so transparent today, I will go on to tell you further that I did not know my worth and I did not know my value. And I was a very insecure individual who masked that insecurity with a false sense of pride. And I acted like a harlot and a heathen. And I did not know that my body was a temple. And I was always looking for love in the wrong places. And I would jump at the first sign of somebody paying me any attention at all because I had a deep soul wound of rejection and abandonment that needed to be dealt with. And so in a sense, when God took me on this journey and walked me through why I acted the way I had and why I had made allowances for the worst kinds of abuse in a relationship. I had made allowances for people that choked me in the middle of my sleep. I made allowances for people who kicked me down the stairs. I made allowances for people who blackened my face. I made allowances for people who talked to me like I was trash, refuse in the streets. I made allowances for people who tried to control my every move, including whether or not I wear makeup on my face, or what kind of clothes I wear, or who my friends could be. I made allowances for people that tried to isolate me and keep me far away from anybody that could ever talk me out of leaving them. I made allowances for these things. I made allowances for men that I knew that I was always the one being accused of cheating, even though I was constantly in the house under super surveillance. But they were the ones cheating and they were the ones being caught with numbers in their pockets. I made allowances for these things. I allowed myself to be treated like less than a dog because I didn't know my worth and I didn't know my value. And as much as I wanted to convince everybody else that I loved myself, that couldn't have been further from the truth. I hated who I saw when I looked in the mirror. And I can confidently say today that not only do I love who I see now, amen, but I can confidently say I'm reaching a place where I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made and, and marvelous are his works and that I am precious in his sight and that God does not make mistakes and that I am not a burden to him and I can rest in that. And I no longer need to seek my validation from outside sources. I have all the validation I need in Jesus Christ. And I no longer have to walk around carrying this weight of shame for the choices that I've made because the Lord has liberated me from that. He literally cuts the yoke of shame right off my neck. 
and I was able to forgive myself. I was able to forgive myself for the ways that I acted, for the people that I hurt, for how many times I, I mocked and I blasphemed God, for the things that have happened to my, to my own children as a result of my choices, I was able to finally let that go and leave it at the feet of Jesus. But I'm here to testify today that God can change any heart. My heart was cold. I was full of bitterness and resentment and hatred and rage. I was combative. Nothing but negativity would pour out of my mouth because how many of us know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks and my mouth was foul. Every other word coming out of my mouth before the Lord got a hold of me was a curse word. I lived for gossip and talking about other people and to put other people down actually made me feel better about myself. I cursed other people with my own mouth because how many of us know that life and death are in the power of the tongue? I have renounced these things and praise the Lord that I can be forgiven for them. But since I decided that I was not going to live like a harlot anymore, I had a, a conversation with the Lord one day. I was trying to negotiate with him. There was somebody that I was with and I knew he was no good. But I was trying to negotiate with the Lord. I know you can change anyone and this is the one I want. I was still very selfish. This is the one I want. This is the one I have chosen for me. And I said, and I know you can change him, even though he wasn't a believer, even though he mocked God when I brought him to church. I was still hopeful. So I was reading a book. It was by T.G. Jakes. It was called Woman Thou Art Loose. And... Um, I asked the Lord to speak to me. I said, I'll do whatever you want. And I remember I was sitting out on my aunt's deck at the time at her condo. It was a beautiful day. I'm reading this book. And the words practically jumped off the page at me. It said, keep on going. Don't look back. It was very self-explanatory. There was no way I could have twisted those words and tried to make them what I wanted them to be. It was clear. He was saying, get away from this individual and do it quickly. So I made a vow and a promise to the Lord that day, and that was six years ago. And I said to the Lord, God, there are some things in me that I don't quite understand, that make me make allowances for domestic violence of the worst kind just for the sake of having someone close to me. And I said, until you heal me of this, it's just me and you, Lord. You are my beloved now. It is just me and you. I am betrothed to you. I will not date another individual. I will not even look in the direction of a man until this, whatever this is, is worked out of my heart, is worked out of my soul, until my, my, my mind is healed from all the damage that was done from the emotional and the verbal abuse. Because truthfully, I had been with several people, but it felt like I was dating a different man with the same spirit. A different man with the same spirit. Sadistic, sociopathic, narcissistic, all about themselves, highly prideful, extremely abusive, degrading, demeaning, and always in the form of a joke so that they could subtly chip away at my self-esteem until one day 
I would look in the mirror and realize I was a shell of the person that I was before I entered into this, this partnership. So I made a vow to the Lord. I said, I will not be with anyone. It's just me and you now. And I said, but if you ever, if you ever want me to be married in the future, I want you to pick him. I want you to choose him. Because I said, none of my choices have ever been good. So I wanted to share that with you all. That was six years ago that I made that vow. Now the Lord wants me to read from Proverbs 31 to close this out, starting at verse 10. Because he declared, this is who I am becoming from glory to glory. The woman who fears the Lord, an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. 